By 1968, the country is swept up in a wave of change and rebellion. This was still the time of the Comics Code. Comics Code had been instituted in the 50s because uh, people were afraid that the youth of America was being corrupted by these evil comic books. But the climate of the era wasn't lost on the editors at Marvel Comics. Stanley, Jack Kirby, they were like, let's give them these kinds of real topics that other superhero characters would never talk about. DC at that point recognized that the superhero character type had deeply changed and they were going to have to change with it. This is DC Comics, neck and neck with Marvel. Let's get into the story. I'm up to the sequence where they're training together. Artist Neil Adams, along with his writing partner, Denny O'Neill, have an idea how to do this. We sort of quietly decided that we're not just going to do a regular comic book. How about we take Green Arrow and we join him up with Green Lantern and we send him off on a voyage across America? The two drive off in an old pickup truck to find America and along the way witness the country's problems. Fanatical religious groups, the union towns, the court system that's screwed up, the political system that's screwed up. The two heroes have opposing points of view and are seen as representations of the intense divide among the American people. Green Lantern is the old school superhero who sees things in terms of black and white. Green Arrow challenges him to recognize that sometimes things are more complicated than he thinks. We got into a lot of territory but then we were kind of running out of subjects. And I realized that we hadn't hit drug addiction. The Comics Code specifically forbade any conversation about drug addiction. So I did a cover. Speedy in the foreground, and he's got what's called the fixins for a heroin addict to shoot up. I went down the hall to an office of a, an editor named Julie Schwartz, and he went <coughs> like that. <laughs> what is this? I said, that's the cover we should be doing. So we can't do that. I said, but we should. He said, you just, you're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. Three months later, I'm visiting my friends over at Marvel Comics. I go and see Johnny Ramita. He shows me a Spider-Man page in which somebody pops some pills and walks off a roof. I said, did you send it to the code? Yeah, I sent it to the code, and they rejected it. The self-regulating comics code authority that came about in the 50s is still in full swing, policing all publications to ensure they are morally sound. Stan said he'd like to run the book without the code seal. Really? Wow. I go back a couple of days later. Johnny, what's going on? He says, nothing. I said, what do you mean, nothing? They didn't notice the seal wasn't on the book? No one in the country? No, we, no, we didn't get any letters or anything, nothing. They didn't notice the seal wasn't on the book. Holy cow. Okay, so what's gonna happen? They're gonna call a meeting of the Comic Code Authority. So they have a meeting like two days later and they voted to change the Comics Code from top to bottom. Julie Schwartz comes down the hallway and says, we're gonna do that book. Denny's writing the script now. <laughs> Within a couple of years, the comics code was gone. They come from real life, real personal spaces in those lives. It's the core DNA of the American people. Our world is no longer black and white, and our superheroes have come to reflect that.